Welcome back everyone. Today's video is a follow-up to the motion blur motorcycle tutorial I did a few days ago. A viewer asked if I could apply the same technique to flowing water. Let's say, for example, you took this picture of a beautiful woman in front of a waterfall and wanted to capture a little more movement in the water. Well, let me show you how I did this in Affinity Photo 2. By the way, I love taking requests. So, if you have anything you want to learn, please let me know in the comments section below. Anyway, I found this lovely image on pixabay.com. As you can see, the water and rocks are blurred in the background, but we're not really getting that sense of time and movement that you would if the shutter speed was set to stay open a bit longer. But we can add this effect pretty quickly in Affinity Photo 2. The first thing I'll do is to isolate the foreground woman and rocks from the background area. So I'll go to the left-hand toolbar and choose the Selection Brush tool. I'll make my brush head a bit bigger by clicking the right square bracket key a few times and then I'll paint over the area I want to select. To make my brush head smaller again to work in the little details, I'll click the left square bracket key a few times. And to undo areas that were over-selected, just hold the Option or Alt key while painting them away. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, I'll click on the Refine button on the top toolbar. With the matte adjustment brush selected, I'll paint over her hair a bit and let Affinity do. It's best to get in the finer details. Other than that, the selection is looking great, so I'll go to the Output Mode drop-down and select New Layer with Mask and then click Apply to put the cutout foreground into its own layer. All right, Affinity automatically turns the original background layer off, so I'll turn it back on by clicking the little dot to the right of the layer. Then I'll click Command or Control J to duplicate it, and then I'll turn off the top cutout layer. I'm going to add some motion blur to this layer, but I don't want to blur the woman, so I'll go to the In Painting Brush tool in the left-hand toolbar and paint over her to remove her from this layer. There, that's good. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'll turn the top layer back on to reveal the woman. Next, I'll click on the Live Filters button and then select Motion Blur, and then I'll raise the slider all the way up to 100%. Then, to turn the angle of the blur from horizontal to vertical, I'll just move this little dial so that it's pointing straight down. And I think I want even more blur, so I'll highlight the 100 pixel value in the little box and manually type in 200 pixels. Okay, that's looking much better. Now, here's a tip that a lot of beginners don't realize. The live motion blur filter acts like a mask. To show you what I mean, I'll make sure the filter is selected on the layer then I'll select my paintbrush tool and then change the color to black. I'll make my brush head bigger and then I'll paint over all of the background area that I don't want blurred. I'm using a soft round brush here with the flow set to 25% and the hardness at 0%. This allows me to take off areas in a soft and subtle way. And so yeah, there you go. That's how you can add motion blur to water. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.